Since I was already set up with the heat lamp on the XLT, I decided to just go with that. So we swapped out the guitars. I brought this Furch guitar over to the XLT unit. We got the heat lamp set up. So this guitar brings a couple of different challenges to the table. One, it is a cedar top. Much, much softer than spruce. The bridge itself, and you'll see when I pull the shield off, that it's a different shape. So it also demands a little bit of improv as far as masking goes to keep the heat where it belongs. Here, this is where the CNC cutter skimmed the outside perimeter of the bridge. People are way too quick these days to point at the CNC machine and think it's the be-all and end-all. You can see right here where that CNC cutter slipped. We're going to abandon this idea completely. We're going to basically sand it dead flush and we will have a hundred percent contact on this entire bridge. And if you look closely you can see the faint line of the glue that I had very gently sand off flat. It's not just that you're losing this much gluing surface, you're losing this much again. So it's a small wonder this bridge came off and the, and the action was lifting. You know, CNC machines are not always the answer. And I deal with it every day when it comes to dressing frets. I constantly correct. In fact, in this case, it makes an inferior joint look perfect. When I'm done, it will be perfect. And it will never come off. So here's a real close look just to show you how accurate you can be without the help of a CNC machine. Uh, the only spot that I could really find was here. That's it. That one spot. So we'll hit that one high spot. It's gone. And you've seen this in previous videos as well. If the frets are really badly worn, well, you just pull them out, you put new ones in, dress the new ones down to the level of the original frets, then you're back to factory spec. But in the case of this one, by the time we're done our finer grits of sandpaper and uh, buff it out, it'll just be a faint little ghost mark. See the, this little speck here? There's also a very minute little speck right here. It's very important that you don't overthink it too much. Now I did adjust the truss rod and I'll need to put that load back on. The load that I took off to straighten the neck will have to go back this is, on. because This is being set up for the EJ19 D'Addario's which is a bluegrass string. So there's a fair amount of torque on this neck. Analysis, I just wanted to bring you in close to show you just how accurate a fit the got. Here's the front edge. Much more accurate than that CNC machine. And we've got 100% intimate contact with the top. Realize a lot of the time a bridge will kind of lift slightly and it'll be like that for years. But as soon as it lifts, even the slightest little bit, all of the base, all of the mid-range, all of the attack, all of the sustain, everything goes right out the window. So all of that has been restored now in this guitar. It's not just that it plays silky smooth and the intonation is perfect, it's perfectly in tune, but there's all kinds of overtones and mid-range and bass that has returned probably for the first time since the guitar was no, made. By the look of that bridge underneath, I don't know if it ever really had that good a contact. I mean, that's one of the reasons it lifted. Anyway, that's all behind us now. So I'm just going to play a couple of things with this and uh, let you hear it. So here's a, whatever you want to call it, kind of a thing in A. Mm -hmm. 